Do you sometimes feel like you're not enough? That somehow you don't measure up? Is today one of those days where you need to hear from God what he exactly thinks of you? Well, I don't know about you, but for most of us, we have times in our lives where we struggle with our self-worth and our self-image. And today I want to examine just one place, one time, one situation where we struggle with our self-image and then give a healing word from God from the scriptures. If this is what you're interested in, stay tuned. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, Pastor Keith Germany, pastor of the Oakland Elmhurst SDA Christian Church here in Oakland, California. And I'm so glad that you're taking this time to spend with us in the Word of God. And before we get into today's lesson, I want to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon. The icon will let YouTube know that you want to be notified whenever we go live with a brand new lesson. So please hit that bell icon. Please subscribe so that you can be part of this ministry as it goes out into the world. And with that, let's get into today's lesson. Maybe you're like me. From time to time, you struggle with your self-worth. Maybe it's because you feel like you're failing at something that is important to you. Or maybe you can't shake the whispers of negative voices from your past. Or perhaps you were amazed by something someone else did and thought, I wish I could do that. I don't know the cause, but have you ever felt worthless? Well, when it comes to this thing called self-worth, there's a dirty little secret behind it. And here it is. Although we call it self-worth, very little of it is actually created by us ourselves. We're actually handed most of it in our lives. Let me illustrate it this way. When was the last time you put together a jigsaw puzzle? I don't know what your method is, but I'm more of a traditionalist. I start by assembling the edges. The middle of the puzzle is always the most difficult. I can only put those pieces together because I know what the picture is supposed to look like. But what if you were given a puzzle without a picture as a guide? Come here, somebody. Our self-image is like a jigsaw puzzle where we don't have the final picture. So all throughout our lives, people hand us pieces of the puzzle and we put it together in a way trying to imagine what we actually are based on the pieces that were handed to us. For example, if enough people compliment you on how pretty you are, you add a piece called pretty to your puzzle. Or a childhood bully taunts you, you add an insecurity to your puzzle. And if you combine those pieces with our profiles, our personality, and our preferences, we spend our lives trying to put these pieces together into a picture of who we think we are. But here's the thing. As we age and mature, we collect jigsaw piece puzzles that are full of darkness, and we're not exactly sure what to do with them. In fact, they drive our sense of insecurity and create problems for our self-worth whether they're traumatic experiences in our past or perhaps somebody said something crazy to us, whatever it might be, it drives our sense of self-esteem and, and our problems with it. And so today, I want to discuss just one insecurity that we face. Here it is. What do we do with the evil that we have done in our past? What do we do with those places of our personality that we hide when company comes over? What do we do with the things that cause us shame? So much shame that we can't even meet our own eyes in the mirror. I mean, we all have them. Perhaps you betrayed a friend. Maybe you cheated on a lover. Maybe your addiction has hurt those around you. Take a moment just to think about it. I'll wait. If I'm right, it probably didn't take you long to figure it out. Those dark places are very close to our mind and to our consciousness. And those dark places make us feel from time to time like we are worthless, like there's something wrong with us on the inside. And if you're feeling that today, then may I suggest that we spend a few moments looking at what God has to say to us. Consider this in the book of Romans, written by the Apostle Paul. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, New International Version. 
But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners. That is a powerful phrase. While we were still sinners. That means that God didn't wait for us to get our act together. It is while the stench of our sins were still lingering in our clothes, while the words we're speaking are still hanging in the air, while the dirt is still beneath our fingernails, Christ died for us. That, that the Bible declares that God didn't wait for us to get our act together, that he loves us before we're lovable, that he accepts us before we're acceptable, that he desires us before we're desirable. Woo! Somebody missed it. That was your shouting moment. Let me say it again for those who just turn up their speakers. Listen, listen, listen. God loved you before you were lovable. He accepted you before you were acceptable. That he desired you before you were desirable. Oh, that's the word of God. While we were still sinners. 2,000 years ago, on the windswept slopes of a hill called Calvary, Jesus was thrown backwards onto a rough-hewn cross. His arms were stretched wide until his muscles strained. A Roman soldier took those nails and drove them down into Jesus' quivering flesh. And although the Bible doesn't say this, I can almost imagine the shout Jesus must have given when the nails pierced his skin. Hear it again as though for the very first time that Jesus demonstrated the burning passion of God on our behalf. That God wanted us more than his own life. That God was willing to go through hell for us than to be in heaven without us. Mm. Somebody missed that. Let me say it again. That God was willing to go through hell for you rather than be in heaven without you. And I know, I know, I know. Somebody's probably going to ask me. I love this. But brother pastor... What do I do with my feelings of worthlessness? I'm so glad that you asked. And in just a moment, we're going to consider something that might transform the way we relate to those dark puzzle pieces in our lives. But before we do, can I ask you to consider subscribing to this channel if you've been blessed thus far? Subscribe and please hit that bell icon so that you might be notified whenever the next video drops. Also, would you consider writing a comment below? Your comments help YouTube to push this video so that others might receive a blessing from this word too. So if you would, just pause the video right here and just leave a comment for just a moment. Thank you for your time. And now let's get back into the word of God. For those of us who are struggling with a sense of worthlessness, there's something I never considered before. In John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 through 27, it tells a story of how Thomas was hanging out with the rest of the apostles after Jesus' resurrection. Up until this point, Thomas hadn't actually seen Jesus. The rest were telling them, him about how they had actually witnessed Jesus. And in that moment, Thomas says, I don't believe it. In fact, he says, I won't believe it until he placed the finger where the nails had been. The Bible says that one day Jesus appeared while Thomas was there. And the word of God says this, John chapter 20 and verse 27, New International Version. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Jesus gave Thomas the opportunity to feel the scars. But I got to thinking, something I never considered before. Why does Jesus still carry the scars? I mean, this is Jesus' resurrection body. This is his body that's been remade and perfected for glory. This is the body that can no longer die. So then why does he carry the scars? I mean, consider this for just a moment. Those scars are from Jesus' worst day on planet Earth. I mean, they were the absolute, it was the absolute worst day of Jesus' life. I mean, it was the day that one of his disciples betrayed him. Another one denied even knowing him. This was that day, the day where he was stripped and beaten and spat upon. This was that day where he was nailed to a cross and even God forsook him. This was that day. Why would Jesus hold on to that day, keep the scars 
from that day. If it were my body, I would get rid of those scars. So why does Jesus still have them? I need you to consider for just a moment that although it was Jesus' worst day, God took Jesus' worst day and made it our best day. It's because of Jesus' worst day that you and I have any hope whatsoever. And here's the thing that I want you to catch, capture in just a moment. Come here, somebody. That God can take our scars and make them beautiful. Oh, I need you to hear me today. That God can take our ashes and make them into roses. That God can do something beautiful with even our scars. All right, let me give you an illustration. It wasn't until recently that I heard of the Japanese art of kintsuji. Kintsuji, have you ever heard of it? Apparently, it's an art form where a craftsman takes a broken vessel, like a vase or a bowl, and then mends it. What's unique about it is that instead of simply applying some glue to bring it back to where it once was, kintsuji uses a paste mixed with gold or some other precious material. Instead of hiding the cracks, the gold accentuates them. The broken places aren't hidden. They're made beautiful. I said the broken places aren't hidden. They're made beautiful. Come here, somebody. So what do we do when we are feeling worthless? Let's use those feelings as a reminder that God is working kintsuji upon our souls. That he is taking our broken places and making something beautiful from them. Hey, hey, hey. I love that. That God is taking our broken places and making something beautiful from them. Didn't the Apostle Paul put it this way? Romans 8 and verse 28, New International Version. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All things means all things. All things are working for our good. Even our failures, even those dark places. If we confess and repent of our sins, God can take even those things, those broken places and make something, something beautiful from them. All things will work for our good. So when we're surrounded by darkness and, and worthlessness is pressing upon our souls, we need to remind ourselves that even this will work for our good. When, when guilt washes over our lives and all of a sudden we feel like we can't go on, we need to remind ourselves that even this is working for our good. When shame seems to drag us down and make us feel like we don't belong, I got news for you. Use those emotions to remind us that even this will work out for our good. God is working things out for our good. He will make something beautiful even in those broken and dark places in our lives. That's good news. I love that. If you believe that God is going to, to make your scars beautiful, I want to encourage you to leave a comment right now. Leave a comment that says, God will make my scars beautiful. Drop those in the comments right now. God will make my scars beautiful if you believe that. Well, I am so honored you've taken this time to spend together in the Word of God. I hope that you were blessed. And if you were, would you please consider subscribing to this channel and hit that bell icon so that you might be notified whenever I drop another video. Please leave a comment below and like this video. Each time you do that, it helps to get the Word out there so that others might be encouraged about what God says about each and every one of us. If you're interested in more content like this, then please check out my video on how to study the Bible effectively. I will leave a link in the description below and it will be in the cards afterwards. Will God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and grant you peace. May he go before you to prepare your way, come behind you to clean up your mess. May he be over you to protect you, under you to lift you up, and may he sit by your side just as a friend. Go out there today and make today wonderful. And let's put hope on black.